I'm very pleased to be with you this morning um, and welcome you at, to the annual uh, General Assembly of the Global Donor uh, Platform for Rural Development. The um, German Federal Ministry for, Ec for Economic Cooperation and Development, my ministry BMZ, which is the part of the politically responsible institution of today. The Deutsche Gesellschaft für Internationale Zusammenarbeit, the GIZ, to implement our technical cooperation and KFW, uh, where we are at the moment, um, our financial cooperation part, this is. We all welcome you very warmly to this meeting. Uh, I wish to thank KFW for, uh, for hosting us here, and indeed it is a fantastic building with very much history in the background, and maybe you'll find some time to know about this building um, and the building's history. Ladies and gentlemen, the BMZ, GIZ and KFW have defined a common theme for 2012 and that is future makers. Future makers in a way that we wish to concentrate with our policies on future related, uh, open for changes and in all sectors uh, open to innovations. That is what we would like to do this year and further on find innovative solutions for the problems of today and tomorrow. Rural development and food security are issues where this need is more evident than, the most, than in most uh, other fields. However, and whoever wants to attain sustainable food security needs to take account of countless aspects of their efforts. However, and whoever wants to make progress in this field must point the way to innovative answers. This is why I mentioned future makers. We want to make a better future happen and we want to find ways to uh, a very pres a prosperous future, which is, of course, difficult, but we wish to take the, um, the chances and the risks as well. A little more than two years ago, when I first came into office, my first task was to go to Rome and take part at the World Food Summit in November 2009. Fighting hunger and working for global food security had once more become a global pol policy issue. Previously, the world had been trying to ignore the hunger problem for far too long. And that is really a shame, no doubt, because even before food prices had risen, about 850 million people throughout the world were suffering from hunger, most of them in rural areas far from all public and political attention. In Rome, we adopted the five Rome principles for sustainable global food security. And ever since, I have considered the third principle particularly important, and that was strive for comprehensive twin track approach to food security that consists of firstly direct action to immediate uh, tackling hunger for the most vulnerable, and secondly, medium and long term sustainable agricultural food security, nutrition, and rural development programs to eliminate the root causes of hunger and poverty, including through the progressive realization of the right to adequate food. In other words, short-term relief is, of course, important, 
and still is important, and for the hungry, absolutely vital. But in parallel, long-term measures must be taken during a crisis to pave the way for ending hunger on a lasting basis. And this part is usually far too much neglected. I will put it even more drastically. After prevention had been shamefully neglected for decades, we must finally take action now that the crisis has hit to address the root causes of hunger and poverty. Investment in agriculture is indispensable. And if such investment is not to become a mere flash in the pan, but have a lasting impact, it must be part of broader strategies for rural development. Just like many other donors, Germany responded to the crisis quickly. We have made rural development and food security a, a priority of Germany's development policy. We have considerably increased our funding for this sector and we now have a clear strategy for action. This was the first step. It was necessary and it was right. But the problem is far from having been resolved. It is only now that the world is beginning to realize the dimension of the challenge because the food prices and <clears throat> was only the first reality shock. The second shock came right away last year. The terrible famine in the Horn of Africa. This new crisis had little to do with high food prices. Now very different causes, factors became evident. The drought for example, led to the complete breakdown of a very unstable system of regional food supply. The vulnerability and lack of resilience of that system became painfully um, open and evident. The, the political conflict and state failure, over-exploitation and mismanagement of uh, natural resources, lack of infrastructure, for example, and lack of trade relations are just some of the causes I can name this morning. They led to a disastrous regional famine of a dimension that humankind throughout the world had never been seen, at least since 1960s. This experience has shown very clearly, in my view, that sustainable global food security is a huge task, a task for, for all of us. Not only must we answer to, be, to find solutions to economic instability and volatility in the form of drastic price um, vol volatility. Rural development also means that we have to link various tasks in a much better way. Let me take the nexus between water, energy and food security as an example. The Water, Energy and Food Security Nexus Conference held in Bonn in November last, last year with the support of BMZ, clearly showed how and where water, energy and food and also climate policies are related and that they have to be thought and acted together. What we need is a new holistic approach to sustain ecosystems, services, and to avoid unintended consequences of the actions of other se sectors. We have to make use of promising technologies like desalination of seawater 
or drought-resistant varieties. They can signific significantly increase food production and thus enhance food security. It is our common task to use this potential and to include the message of the Bonn Nexus Conference into the Rio Plus 20 summit in June. <clears throat> Rural development means making people more resilient to political, social and also ecological risks. Even in politically, economically and ideologically unstable times, the agricultural sector must have the capacity to feed the people. And, and in an even better scenario, the agricultural sector and rural development would in turn be helping to eliminate and prevent political, economic, economic and ecological threats to food security. This is a global challenge and we must not leave the countries that, that are most affected by hunger to fend for themselves. Dear ladies and gentlemen, we can only overcome poverty and hunger by working together much more closely with our partner countries, but also with, with the private sector. We need investment in the agricultural sector. The agricultural sector is a classic case of private sector business. But the private sector does not start at the level of major investors. Every small farmer is an entrepreneur. This is where our support must start. Small farmers need access to markets, to training, and to financial services. Inclusive business models have now emerged, and they have shown that they are promising. They involve fair cooperation, between larger investors and agricultural enterprises on the one hand and small farmers on the other for their mutual benefit. However, ladies and gentlemen, we need to be careful. We know that. Not all private investment in land or agriculture is good. Sadly, there have been countless reports of land grabbing, of human rights violations, and of over-exploitation of natural resources. We, the donors from rich countries, have a responsibility in several ways to prevent such undesirable de developments. Firstly, land grabs rob rural people of their opportunities, while responsible investment would give them new opportunities and prospects for a much better life. From a development perspective, we must not tolerate this kind of thing. And secondly, we, and that is you and I, have a responsibility as consumers it is our own growing consumption of agricultural goods of all kinds, food, feed, fuel, and fiber, that is leading to growing demand for agricultural land in developing and emerging countries. Did you know, ladies and gentlemen, that per year about 20 million tons of food is actually be being thrown away in Germany, and that is really a problem as well. The EU's vital, virtual uh, net land import, for example, is about 35 million hectares. So on top of its own ag agricultural land, the EU is using an area one-third that size in addition, outside its own borders for agricultural production. And this is an equal 
to about the total area of Germany. And this is an aspect and a problem we have to think about as well. In principle, there's nothing wrong with each country contributing its specific resources in a globalized world. However, it is problematic that many agricultural goods that are grown on this ex-territorial land and then imported to Europe are not produced in a way that sufficiently honors social, ecological and human rights standards. For instance, recent studies have shown that more and more imported agricultural goods come from regions with high levels of soil and land degradation and or high levels of deforestation. Unless we take corrective act actions, ladies and gentlemen, there may be a few short-term winners, including European consumers. But in the long term, everybody will lose. We should not forget this problematic aspect. This is why I attach so much importance to defining as quickly as possible universally accepted sustainability criteria at the international level. We need more transparency so as to eliminate the breeding ground for corruption in the context of agricultural investment. And we need to build our partner countries' capacities for making optim optimum use of such investment to attain sustainable development. Only then can the benefit of liberal trade policies be fully tapped for all stakeholders, including future generations. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to talk about many different subjects this morning, and I hope we will be successful. And I wish to emphasize once again that Germany is one of the funding members of the Global Donor Platform for Rural Development and has supported the network's activities from the beginning since 2003. The network's significance has grown considerably over that long period. Germany will therefore continue its support. I believe that the platform's informal character is an important characteristic. It facilitates open dialogue and flexibility and enables you to address new issues as they emerge. This is also evident from the fact that this year's annual General Assembly is entitled Strengthening Resilience in Agriculture and Rural Development.